Hi, I'm Mark Hall with the Alabama Cooperative Extension System. Welcome to our Advanced Precision Agriculture course. With me today to help you improve your planting efficiency is Dr. John Fulton, the Precision Agriculture Specialist for the Ohio State University. John, planting is one of, if not the most important jobs in successfully growing a crop. And it's unbelievable how much planters have improved. Tell us how precision seeding techniques are saving money and improving crop yields. Hey, John, welcome back to Alabama. Hey, Florida. it's good to see you, Mark. Yes, precision, before we get into planters, we were talking about phones. Yeah. Farmers say, I don't do precision agriculture. If you've got a cell phone, you do precision agriculture. You, this is can-do technology. Tell us about planting. Hey, you know, the other thing I'd add into to your comment is you think about seed cost today. Wow. You know, um, we talk about just corn itself. A lot of guys will have 100 uh, In some cases, you go to some of these triple stacks, $150 an acre, and it's sitting there in a bag. That's not even in the planter and putting it in the ground. And so, you know, my comment on this is with that kind of an investment, then when I hit the field, I want to make sure that I'm getting that placed at the, at the target rate for population yes. and making sure I get to the depth I want. And uh, we talk a lot about uniformity of emergence, uh, timing Big of difference. emergence. Man, that, that affects your yields. That it, it comes up, every plant comes up within hours of each other. Yeah, if you can get all that up within a 24 or so hour period, it's, it's very critical. So the quality of planting really can influence that. And, and every season's new, as you know, every spring's uh, a new challenge. And so uh, this technology, I think, when we talk about planters, uh, is very important to have, not only for the operator to maintain the performance of that planter, but I think as we go on and, and data becomes more of an important aspect, collecting that and verifying what went on, and, and I think there's also some other things that you can gleam out of that kind of data that's being collected today. So, but uh, let's talk about planting technology. And then we'll kind of get into, these are just some of the things that uh, we were going to talk about today or kind of uh, in reference to the technology itself, a few of the uh, ideas around precision seeding, you know, the Verberate, the yes. multi-hybrid. And then we'll talk a little bit about some of that data I mentioned that uh, farmers can capture and, and have not only for uh, verifying what went on, but uh, kind of in the season type analysis as well. So, you know, I know here in Alabama, as we even go to the Midwest, Ohio, where we're at currently, I mean, this is not a, a new phenomenon. We know our fields uh, are variable in nature. A lot of that deals with uh, the soils themselves in terms of texture, organic matter. You can see that in this. And, and so, but the real key, and we need a lot more science behind this, is how do I, how do I uh, take advantage of that on a profitability mm -hmm. perspective? How do I implement precision seeding, verberate seeding, and be profitable? But uh, we know it's out there. Uh, and certain years is probably going to pay off more than others. Um, but, uh, you know, how do I take advantage of documenting this variability that we know about and then generating prescriptions on the back end that's going to make me some profit or save me some money in some cases? Well, this is a big deal, John. We're talking about reduced input on the front end yep. and maximizing yield, maximizing profit on the, the back end. And you consider today's commodity prices, it doesn't matter if we're going to talk cotton, uh, corn, soybeans, wheat. I mean, we're at a, a relaxed state here today. And so, you know, we want to make sure that what we're investing in, especially that heavy investment in seed, is going to try and bring us some profit. And so we're learning it's along this way, but I think the technology itself on the front end can really, really be an asset to the producer in terms of making sure that that planter, which isn't a cheap proposition itself, is uh, performing uh, from day one to seven or ten, whatever that planting uh, window uh, is make us some money, John. Tell us how to yeah, do it. Yeah, so so you know, I just wanted to kind of let's outline just some of the technologies yeah. when we talk about uh, precision planting or precision seeding. On the right side, there basically is a, a demonstration or an illustration of, of what's capable today. Um, Mark, you know, a lot of these planters, you know, we're talking 12, 16, 24 row, 36 row planters, uh, large planters. Uh, they got weight distribution differences across those planters with the central field, but with the technology, what happens is you're starting to get, we're starting to get that planter from that. It's not a, a 24 row planter today. It's really 24 one row planters. That's, that's where we're at with technology. So 
the smart thing, and we, uh, the first thing is that uh, technology is smartphones and the information. I think we think about uh, uh, growers taking advantage of uh, consumer products, smartphones, iPads, but getting a variety of information, uh, hybrid information on these crops, having that at your fingertips to study, communicating, all that kind of information is, you know, either through an app or some of the basic texting and, and emails that come on. Uh, all of us, it seems like in ag now, are, are utilizing these as a, a way for either gain information or communicate. Uh, and today, some of these apps can talk directly to your, to your machine or you connect to your machine. So you can kind of check in if you're not in the machine or you can kind of watch at a, a very detailed uh, level of what's happening. Guidance technology, Mark. Think about where we're at today versus you know 10, 15 years ago. But guidance today is air conditioning in these machines. It's it's embedded, it's there, and, and we'll talk about what that kind of savings. But in general, guidance is going to reduce and make sure you got straight rows. But it's going to reduce any kind of overlap or uh, on those what we call marriage rows. You know, not to make sure they get too far yeah. off. And so guidance today just uh, is naturally a, a, a tremendous fit. And I think growers that are using these type of planters or watching their bottom line have, have already bought into and implemented. So guidance has been a, a great asset. We got bear break technology. I don't know a planter manufacturer in North America today that uh, either doesn't have it as a standalone already on the planter or a primary option on planters, but the ability to, to, to vary the rates. And think about this, Mark, we're not just talking about varying rates. But when I go out there and I'm planting variety A uh, and B, and I want to just switch over and to change population based on the information, that's an easy task today. And so these uh, drives give you that capacity to make that change instantly from the cab uh, and seamlessly. So that's a, an asset as well. Automatic section control, uh, section control or row control. Uh, we're going to get into that a little bit more, but uh, that's been a tr tremendous benefit. And again, when I look at planters today coming out of the manufacturers, it's pretty much already on the planters. And, um, and you, you, you can talk to any grower and they'll tell you, hey, you know, I've saved, you know, 10, 25 percent on my seed savings just by reducing that overlap. And that's that's money in the pocket. Right. Yeah. So but we'll talk about that even a little bit more uh, downforce. Uh, we call it active downforce. We'll, we'll give an example of that here in a, a little bit. But uh, uh, growers, especially running these large, large planters, the, the 16, 24, 36, even 48, uh, keeping those row units uh, in contact, uh, those gauge wheels pressed down in there to make sure that we're planting at the right depth. Active downforce, given the fact that we have variability out there in these soils, uh, moisture differences, texture differences, that becomes very important to make sure that we're maintaining uh, our target depth uh, on our crops. Uh, the other thing is today uh, for our no-tillers, row cleaners, I can adjust those from the cab. I can bring them up and I tell you what, uh, for our, uh, even in our research running planters, that has just been a real asset. You don't realize the with the train differences and the size of the planters, uh, you can go from just you know, whisking away some of that uh, corn stover or, or biomass that's out there to actually doing tillage. And we don't want to do tillage. Those yeah. things serve a purpose of getting getting that uh, prior crops biomass out of the way, uh, not for tilling. That's what those opening, we want the rest of the row unit to take care of what it was designed to do. So row cleaners, I can almost adjust those in, by sections today with some of the technology. Today too, I can plant two, two varieties or two hybrids in one field mark, and we'll show an example of that. Uh, very exciting uh, technology in the Midwest, uh, very new. Uh, but again, thinking about profit and if I can identify zones of uh, high yield potential, well, let's, let's get our racehorse yeah. varieties, let's invest a little bit more in that area. Uh, and if things have, you know, line up, I can, I can maximize not only yield, but profit. Whereas I got some of those areas that, you know, it does good with some years, bad in others. Maybe I want to be more of a, a low risk tolerant type variety. One that's uh, a little bit more palatable and stressed, but it's still going to give me yeah. kind of that median or above average yield, regardless of the growing conditions. That's what that kind of technology can bring. And the last thing, which is the biggest thing. And when we think about planters is just electric drives. Um, and uh, we'll give an example of that here in a minute, but using electric drives versus the old chains or yeah. hydraulics to drive those row units, basically you got a, a little electric motor on the meter itself today. 
and that just really opens up the door of really being able to fine tune uh, your seeding rate, uh, controlling that row unit very accurately, uh, turning it on and off. It's basically drives all the technologies and some of those above the variable section control, uh, turn compensation. I'll give an example all in one because I can control that electric motor very precisely. So those are the technologies that are out there. Um, you know, I think, Mark, we've talked about this, but when you've got that kind of investment and you look at these displays, and there's just a few examples out there, you see in this case, uh, you actually see a Verberate prescription in there. But to, the key thing is, look down there at the bottom where I'm actually seeing feedback on each and every row. And if you notice out there in row about 22 where it's under seating significantly, okay, you see that bar, basically the 100% of it would be 100% of whatever the target is. Uh, but you can see row by row how each one of the, how your population is being metered row by row. Hey, if you get a little bit high and a little bit low, think about having that knowledge. You stop the planter, you go back there, check things out, uh, make a correction, and I'm not planting a hundred, if not a thousand acres oh, and never yeah. knowing about it. So this, uh, to me, as an investment from a planting perspective, uh, and a utility to really make the grower money, this is, this is the key to have a, a really high end, end cab display that uh, can be utilized effectively. Again, my idea is day one, uh, whatever, day 10, day 14, I wanna make sure everything's being done as, as uh, that's in my control to the best of mm -hmm. its ability. And so it gives row by row feedback. Uh, we call it singulation, so you know how well that meter's performing. Is it picking up a seed in every hole on the plate, example? And going back to our smartphones, uh, whether it's deer or precision planning uh, or such, you know, they've got it where if you're connected or have a Wi-Fi connection, I can actually watch that on my iPad today. And if I'm a grower where someone else is doing my planning, I think that's a value proposition that gives me, you know, confidence that things are going right in the field. And I can go back and post play that too. I can always go back and look what happened. The other good thing is, is I can enable on farm experiments. You know, how many times you want to go out and do a seeding raid or a nitrogen trial or something like that. These things just make it so simple to set that up and, and retain records uh, for that. So. Well, it'd be great for if a problem arises, you could look back and say, it wasn't seeding because, you know, we That's got right. this record. There's something else. What else is going on? That's right. And, and, and having that information, you know, if you don't measure it, you don't know. Yes. All right. Or if you don't have the ability to visualize it, you never know. And, and again, um, you know, you just look at what the companies have done to improve planning technology. It's the fact that we're collecting this information or visualizing in the case of a display. To, to make those corrections and yeah. ensure that things are working properly. So, so displays number one technology, you know, Mark and, and you kind of, we worked on this together a little bit, but uh, section of road control, we talk about how mm -hmm. much savings it, it provides. Just an illustration again of what it does. I mean, it goes from me having to turn that planter on and off manually, making that decision from the cab and maybe doing that over a, a eight, 10, 15 hour day to using it all based on GPS. Uh, and the idea here is as you plant, the, that display, what we call a coverage map, is retained so it knows where it's been planting. So anytime a portion of that plant or, or a row goes into an area that's already pre-planted, it just automatically shuts it off. So, but the interesting thing that I think that we learned during our, our research uh, here when we worked on this is it not only gives our savings, and there's a 4.3, 4.4% on average savings with this technology, and it could be high as 10, 15 uh, percent in these really odd shaped, you know, yeah. it's all dictated by shape and size of the field. So it can be a lot higher, that's just on average. But we don't think about the yield loss and the harvest loss in those double planted areas. And that goes for cotton or, or corn And when we research this. In this case, we've got an example of corn, but the yield loss in those areas that are double planted is 17 percent. There's a lot of reasons for that. Competition, plants a lot closer together, not getting aerated, there's more incidence of disease, et cetera, that can happen. But then the other thing is when I go around the field and I, I get into those double uh, planted areas, you know, there's gonna be the snouts pushing, pushing stalks straight down and uh, an ear yeah. is a lot of kernels to be lost and that's six times higher. John, so, to me, uh, it's more important for corn you know, soybeans can compensate a little bit, cotton can compensate, but corn, if you don't get it planted right, 
that's it. Yeah, that's right. And uh, and uh, the nice thing, and, and there's a, a reference here to the publication we put out uh, at Auburn, but the, the cotton data is in there. There's an advantage to this in cotton as well as far as it relates to yield and even harvest loss. And so um, there's savings, but there's also these other components mm -hmm. you got to consider. So you talk about making money with technology. You know, the, the idea, of whether it's section or row control, is, has become pretty much a, a one, maybe two-year max type payback. I mean, it's almost a no-brainer today. So, so that's one of the key technologies. Talking about variable rate or rate control, this is uh, just an example of a hydraulic drive. Again, going back to Mark, if you remember back, way back when, we basically had the, all these chain transmissions, right? They were ground-driven, yes. and I'd have to change out the gear ratio to meet kind of my population. I wasn't even sure if I was doing it at that point, right? Right. But with this feedback and the ability to, to drive that, this is a hydraulic motor, like I mentioned as an example. And again, any manufacturer building planters today, uh, a lot of the, the ones, if they're not using electric, ha are equipped with these hydraulic drives. So we just want to kind of illustrate that here to, to folks. So, but today, you know, um, the new thing is is getting rid of all the chains and even the hydraulics, and now we're going to electric drives. And you can see a pretty standard seed meter there that's used around the world in this case, but uh, you take those chains and gears and et cetera out, and you put essentially a, a, a electric motors that kind of look familiar to you. Yes. Very similar that you might find on your windshield, isn't it? Yeah. But, uh, you know, our ability today to, to make those motors more compact, uh, we can control that meter very precisely. And uh, it's just amazing where we're heading. And I think as we, we advance further, pretty much majority of the planters, at least large scale planters that are sold worldwide, will we'll end up having electric drives uh, in the long run. So again, going back to my comment, is not only can it improve our, our, our control but we're going row by row. You know, uh, you get- This is fascinating, John, how you think about a skier, <laughs> skiing behind the boat, but that, that, this is a big deal. And it took somebody a lot smarter than me to figure out how to do that outside and plant the same spacing in there. And this becomes a bigger deal on these larger planters, right? That's, oh, we're not talking- 30 row, 20 row, it's, it would be a, a small planter today. Yeah, we're not eight eight, 12 row, I mean, it's big. And so when you think about even uh, Alabama or the field I showed before, when you plant those headlands, how many times is that, is that planter put into some kind of curve? And so- And the inside would be too close. That's right. You're overpopulating on the inside, underpopulating on the outside. And we didn't worry too much about that. But now that these planters mm -hmm. are larger, uh, I've got a little bit heavier investment in that seed. Uh, and I think this is, again, naturally, a lot of this technology will give you this turn compensation. And this is just an example of a 12-row planter mark. We did a little bit of research uh, and found out that without turn compensation, uh, the difference between the population on the inside, row 1, versus the outside, row 12, was anywhere from 8 to 20 percent, depending on the mm -hmm. curve, you know, the, the radius of the curve. You put turn compensation on, it basically got you down to, to 3% or less. And, and kind of the rule of thumb is if it's 15%, could be a little less and depend on the crop, but you're having a, a yield difference across there. So again, just, just kind of fine tuning the planting operation. And then the last thing here, and, and we'll take a kind of, kind of change and pivot to, to kind of talking more on the data and uh, using variable rate, but the, the newer thing, again, going is this active downforce. And uh, we used to have those mechanical springs that we could adjust to maintain contact, but now we either put basically a, a, an airbag or a hydro hydraulic uh, cylinder in there. Hydraulics are becoming more uh, popular today, but actually to maintain uh, the down pressure on that row unit that ultimately is trying to uh, keep that, uh, the gauge wheels and the opening disc and everything engaged and, and running at the proper depth and, and downforce. And so uh, I just think about all the, the field variability that a planter can run into. Uh, when we think about moisture, we're talking about texture, you combination thereof. 
how do you manage that and ensure that that's uh, you know getting planned properly and not causing compaction? A lot of moving parts, a lot of variability. A lot of variability, and so this is a kind of technology um, that uh, can help maintain the a common downforce on those gauge wheels across that planter, and uh, we have found that being a very valuable and a value add to the to the planting operation that can pay off and and. Uh, just a few years for growers that, that want to implement it. So, so that's kind of a, a quick overview, Mark, of just technology itself. And we think about section control, we think about downforce today, a good display in the cab, for example. Uh, those are very uh, key ingredients, I think, especially for growers to consider if they want to. Um, it's not only technology, but it's, it's, it's technology that can bring some, some um, uh, profit back to their farmstead. So, thank you, John. We're going to talk. This is a question. We're going to talk some more about planning. Yes. We're going to come back and talk some more about planning. Please watch our other videos. Uh, we've got several videos on production agriculture, but we're going to have another one on precision planning in just a bit.